G'day and welcome back to my channel. Well, I thought it was time I better get you up to speed with what's been happening with the rodent junkie. Yes. Look, there's a lot been going on with this. The weather has been beautiful. It's spring here in Australia and the jacarandas are flaring outside. It's really lovely actually. Good time of the year. You get a time in the evening, you know, after work and um, yeah, it is beautiful. So, I might as well give you a little slideshow and I'll talk you through where I've got to and then I'll show you how this kit's coming together because it has been really sweet. I've loved it. Here we go. Here we are. This is just the dry fit of the parts that I've done so far. And I thought I'd better get some stuff down on tape here. Because very soon I'll have the little bugger finished. But anyhow, I'll uh, show you where you're at. There's, um, this is just sort of going to fall apart if I even look at it. But um, as you might have seen in those photographs, that's, here we go. It's all going to fall apart now. The, um, that whole interior was done. These um, the wings just painted up so easily using, using live colour. And um, a little motor, such a little gem. I'm so happy with how that turned out. Even though you won't see a lot of it, I um, had a little bit of time while I was waiting for um, some paint to dry somewhere else, and I just uh, started playing around with it. Now, I don't think that's too bad for 148 scale, you know. You might see a little bit on that side, but um, that's more foray into. Uh, Super detailing mode. Well, I didn't put any spark plug leads on or anything like that. Don't know if that's um, if that's needed. But there you go. She's pretty. So that's the motor. But um, fuselage, the thing that uh, that was quite uh, quite easy to do. I was quite surprised. Okay, see so everything falls off. Nothing's fitted. Oh, these junkers aren't built very well. Are they? Look at them. Everything's fall a bit. So there you can see the um, how I've done the silver. Well, aluminium. You know, uh, aluminium and um, that should actually all be corrugated on the inside there. That's one thing I haven't done, but look, you'll hardly bloody see it, so who cares? So, you know, that's all done. Um, other little seats fallen off. It's hard to know what to do with this seat, really. It, it looks like it's made of, um, of the same corrugated metal as the other things, and the uh, indication was to make it all silver, but it didn't look right when I did it that way, so I sort of did it as you would a sort of wicker seat or something like that. I've, I've weathered washed it with a brown and gave it that sort of look. And that seems to work nicely with colour palette once it goes back into this lovely little cradle. And that came up a treat. I've still yet to do some work. I've got to do the um, little dash here. There's some little bits and pieces I'm going to put in there uh, because I've got that Tom's Model Works um, extra PE that I'd bought by mistake for when I was doing the, the piffle, the, uh, the arrow. I bought uh, German interior and it turned out to be World War One instead of World War Two. But that's perfect for what I need here. So let's have a look at what's on that and I'll also show you those lovely 3D moulded uh, machine guns. So this is the uh, PE from Tom's Model Works. It's quite lovely. It's, it's little, I mean there's my finger, you know. But I uh, could have used the seat from there, but I was happy. But really, all I want from this are the seat belts, and I'll use um, there's some um, the little um, flap hinges. I'll use those as well. Might put a couple of the interior pieces in. There's quite a few of those, and there's instrument bezels and things like that. There's some tiny things in here that might be useful. Certainly, there's um, these are prop. These go over the front of the props. So you know, there's odds and sods in here that I might that I might use. Might as well. Got it. And I don't really need it for any of my other 148 scale kits, which uh, sort of Edward ones already have PE. Eh? So that was quite good. But um, the real find was, was this. 
because what I what I was looking for I, when I found that Tom model works, I went, oh, I've got that in the kit somewhere, you know, one of the other kits, and I thought it might have the shrouds for the machine guns because the machine guns in this kit are not bad. They're they're only plastic. They're not bad, but I thought, oh, it'd be nice to put PE ones on like I did for the um, for the tri the triplane, the DR one. And um, no, they weren't on that model works thing from Tom's. It was only the interior. So I went online looking for the PE shrouds, so because you, you can usually pick those up for about a shekel. You can have one kit, and you get all that, and it usually gives you all the paraphernalia. Well, they were sold out, but this, the same price. Well, eleven dollars, one point one shekels, <laughs> ten percent more. And why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you go with these? Aren't they gorgeous? They really are. They really are quite lovely, and they and there's nothing to to assembling. Not like resin where you've got to cut off a a foot and a base and all the rest of it. No, these are, these are actually little plastic parts. They're 3D moulded apparently, but they are so delicate. So we'll get those sort of machine guns sitting on the top of our rodent, <laughs> our junkie. Um, and I think that's important because without having the top wing, they'll be very prominent. So these two little guys are going to look spiffy right there next to that little motor that I've detailed up. So there you are. That's where I'm at. It's um, it's really come together. I love those little um, gas patch um, machine guns. Those MGs. They are they're amazing. And the price the same as what I would have paid for a PE upgrade for this kit. Not that it needs it really. There's there's you could build it right out of the box. There's actually nothing wrong with those machine guns. I just thought, mm, I wonder if I could get some PE for it. And that other PE I've got for um, from Tom's Model Works that I might put some in the interior. You don't really need it. And you can make your own seat belts and a bit of bloody Tamiya tape, you know, and some paper clips or something. This is a lovely kit. Um, you know, I can't recommend it highly enough. If you want something that's got no rigging, um, it's still kind of fun like a World War One, but it is a monoplane. But still, you've got all the fun of learning how to put, you know, the interior together and build the motor. This is a good leader up kit if you want to get into World War One aircraft because this is easy and the fit is beautiful. All right, enough waffling. I want to get back and finish this one off. So uh, next time I'll probably have the bloody thing flying around the room. <laughs> All right, oh dear. Um, it's goodbye from Australia, and it's Haru from Harry Houdini.